It's episode 90. It's episode 90. I have done 89 episodes before this one. There are 89 episodes in the can of this show. I'm at episode 90. I it I can I'm trying to comprehend the number. I can't comprehend the number that this is episode 90 of Talk a Lot with James Law Jr. I started the show in March of this year. And I did it, I think, thinking I'll do it while we are in this COVID situation, lockdown, whatever you want to call it, quarantining, whatever. And I had no clue when I started this that I'd still be doing this and we'd still be in this COVID situation. Had no idea. No idea whatsoever. So this is very interesting to me. I'm like, just like, wow, okay. 90 episodes of Talk A Lot with James Law Jr. That's just, I've been off of work at home for 130-something days. Like, this is really amazing. It's amazing. I mean, and I'm not saying amazing like I'm the greatest person or like that. I'm just making me just like it's, a, it's amazing that, my glasses down. It's amazing that we are here. Um... Yeah, 100 is coming up. It's just, this is crazy talk. It's crazy talk. I'm planning something for the 100th, I think. I, I mean, I feel like it should be a big thing. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I have a couple of ideas. So, I'm thinking about it. That's literally 10 more episodes from now, which is this month. So, even if I don't do one every day, it's still this month. I got to think of it. So I have a couple ideas. Um, yeah, I have a couple ideas. So we, um, I'm thinking of, yeah, I can't, I can't tell you. I can't, I can't tell you. Um, but yeah, and so online, I wish I had all 89 episodes online. I didn't know how to save these episodes until like episode 25 or 26. And I don't have anything going on there. So... There's enough on there now. The playlist is getting longer and longer. And I'm just like, this is crazy. This is crazy. So I've several, I've several episodes. I've, and some of you guys have been here from the beginning. Or at least near the beginning. I recognize some of your names. And so I'm just like, what is, I mean, this is crazy talk. This is crazy talk. So I don't know. Doing these late night IGs have been very interesting. Um, I came on just to be like a um, a place for people to come to, to feel safe, and to um, uh, a place for anxiety. If you have anxiety, can't sleep, insomnia, nervousness. In the beginning when I did the show, it was, it was really about not watching the news all the time. Because back then, COVID was new, it was hot, it was like, it was everywhere. People were all scared. We didn't know what to do. Uh, we didn't know what they, we, don't wear a mask, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, don't leave the house. I mean, I was like, you know, for 90 days, I did not leave my house or go around anybody. Um, so all this is kind of interesting because tomorrow morning, I'm getting my first COVID test. I'm going to stick that thing up my nose. I'm fascinated by it. I'm fascinated by it. I'm, I'm scared shitless by it, but I'm so fascinated by it too. Uh, I feel like we're gonna just, it's, they say just lasts for seconds. It, it kind of burns a little bit. Um, but I'm going to say thing up my nose. So I probably, probably, I probably will film it and put it on here. <laughs> just because that's who I am. Um, it's, um, thank you. I, I, it's, it's funny because people are telling me they look forward to my show. And I'm talking like celebrities non-celebrities, you guys, people come up to me and are like, oh, we love your show. Oh, my goodness. Uh, where are you? What's going on? You know, I'm just like, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm just like yeah, it's, it's very strange. I just, I did do this. I did this just for like a, a K, I'll do it for, I'll do it occasionally for people. 
And then it's turned into this thing where there's been some really serious moments on the show and silly moments on the show. Food always comes up. It's always food, 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 food. Um, but I just didn't realize that the impact my show would have on people. I really didn't. That, that was not a thought in the beginning at all. And now we're at 90 episodes. 90. 90 episodes. It's crazy. It's just, it is the craziest, craziest thing. I don't even, I don't even like understand. Um, but I appreciate all of you who are just like, you know, look forward to my show and come through the show. We've had a lot of community in the show. People are learning about other people in the show. They're learning about, I have so many talented folks who come through here. Um, you learn about their work. I see by supporting each other. They're following each other online um, and supporting each other's work, which is my, I, I want that so bad for everybody. Um, it's just, you know, and the special, my Yumi episodes, yes, the therapist and the life coach. Mayumi comes on here and we talk about life issues and mindset and, and compassion and trauma. Um, and, you know, this is a random show, folks. I say it goes from silly to serious. It's random as fuck. That's what I do. And I like it. All my other shows are structured. Everything else I do is very structured. I like that this is just random. Just like just talk about whatever, whatever the fuck I want. So, you just never know, folks. When you try something, it just might work. And it's not about numbers for me. I've had some, certain episodes have had, you know, nice numbers, whatever. No matter. If I have just two people on here, it doesn't matter to me. The fact is, I'm here, we're here together, and we're sharing experience. And that's kind of the number one thing that's very important to me. Uh, I am here. Um, and that's what it is. So 89 times we have done this and now we're at 90 and that, that number just is stuck with me. 90. I've done 90 episodes. I don't even know. I'm trying to figure out even like how that even translates into my life. You know, it's just like. You know, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's just, I'm trying to think of that. No, it's just so, because I've, I've had other shows where I hit 100. I have a show that hit 300. My organizing show, we hit over 300. And it's five years old. I have shows to 150, 120, 115. I have a couple of shows hitting 100. So I have the, so I, and again, those trip me out too. But those shows were planned, executed. They're weekly. This is like, I said in the beginning, I'll come on when I feel like it. I had no real commit. I had a commitment, but not a major commitment. I was like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just come on when I feel like it and see what happens. And now it's like I'm on almost every night. So, and it's definitely helped me also. So it's not all... Me give it to you guys. You guys give back to me by being on here, having the topics, uh, talking about stuff. So, a hundred has to be big. I have to make a hundred something big, and I'm I'm really trying to think about it. I'm really trying to figure out what that will be. I'm just not sure yet. I'm not sure what that. I don't know if it's. I, I have some ideas. That I need to work out. Yes, my pat, my okay. So, this actually grew out of my random periscopes. I was, I've, and I still, I still got periscope on here somewhere. I, sh I should look at it and see. I, I've not been on periscope in so long. I should just do it. Just do one and see who would show up. I loved doing periscope. Any of you guys watch my periscopes back in the day? I loved doing periscope. I would just come on at random times. It could be in the afternoon, morning, nighttime. I come on, and I always got a crowd. I got a nice little crowd, and I talk about all kinds of being in the garden sometimes or outside or whatever. And I guess some of the best talks on there. I loved it. I loved being on Periscope. I did a lot of Periscopes. I had a few Periscopes saved in my old phone 
but that phone got stolen, and so those periscopes are gone. They weren't on, they weren't on the, they were with an Android, so they weren't on a cloud or nothing. I think they're gone forever, but I'd love to have some of those periscopes and look at them and watch them. It'd be a trip. So I'd trip going backwards in time looking at yourself. That's always a trip. But I was like, yeah, my periscopes. Oh, yes, my periscopes. Those were the days. Those were the days. Mm-hmm. Sorry, one second. One second. One second. There you go. Get a cough drop. I've been talking a lot today. A lot. A lot. I got a lot of content um, done today. Very productive content creation day. There's Miss Christina 617. Sorry, buddy. Periscope was the bomb. Those that those things that happen at some point too. Yes, I agree with that. Remember that. Mm-hmm. But Periscope was fun. I get on there and just have a good old time. I had a lot of followers. Everybody was on there. We're all doing it together. Then they stopped. Then they went away. I'm mean, still there, but like nobody's on there. So you know, I got shameless self promotion number one. I have a new book out, The Pill Part Five. Get it on Amazon. I have a new show premiering tomorrow called Really, I Am a Grandparent. And so I start tomorrow. I had an interview with somebody today for that show, and it's amazing. It's amazing. I can't wait to do more of this show. I'm very, very excited. This show is just like, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun talking to young grandparents. We are our own breed. Very exciting. So um, that show premieres tomorrow, Judge Media. Tomorrow is also um, is also uh, the really short story podcast. Flo Beto is the guest. He reads one of his published short stories called Open Road. Uh, and it ties into his real life at that time. So that comes out tomorrow. So Flobito, shout out to him. He's not on here right now, but shout out to him. And then another episode of Girlfriends. The Girlfriends After Show is tomorrow, which has been so much fun to do. I have like four more episodes to do. I have them all watched, and I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. So those will come out tomorrow. And then Sunday's a soap block. Soap Sundays, it is, um, it's going to be Forever in a Day premiere, Forever in a Day podcast premiere, Wine Army Spotlight with Brittany Sarpy, Bone Beautiful Mini Spotlight with me, Amanda Russ, and Tammy Govea, GH Mini Spotlight with me, Lucretia Lyon, who's also with, who's a castmate of, um, of Christina's on here from Fair and Day. It'll be Lucretia Lyon, Frank Moran, Carla Renata, and I doing GH reports. And I posted online, uh, Annie, you saw I posted online to tell people, follow me on JLJ Media and you will see, you will see what's going on. So just go to JLJ Media at it's 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just Pick whatever date your time your time is, and go ahead and um, just go to GLJ Media. I'll be on the front page. I'll say live, GHM Spotlight. Click on that. You'll be able to go into the chat room and talk to us and see us live. So tell people just subscribe to GLJ Media and hit that whatever button, and you'll get a notification that I've gone live. Um. And that'll be us talking for as long as we want to. There's no after buzz to keep us like under a certain time period. We can talk as long as we want. And I'm working. There might be a surprise guest. Yes, JLJ Media on YouTube. So I, I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to make it easy for everybody because people are understanding what I'm talking about. So go to JLJ Media. On YouTube, subscribe to my channel, and you'll get a notification, or you know that the GHB spot, there's no GH report, it's dead. 
the GH Mini Spotlight will be the recap for the show. And you'll see my face, you'll see Frank, you'll see everybody. So go there to watch. And then I'll have it as a regular video, and it will be up for everybody to watch afterwards. Um, so, but that's it's going to be on YouTube, yes. I hope that makes sense for everybody. There's no link. The link is my the link is my channel. YouTube.com JLJ Media. And you got it. That's your access to the show. And so there you go. And that's that's how it's gonna happen. And if you can't catch it live or can't figure it out, no problem. It'll be released on audio and it'll be released on video right afterwards. Yes, Kelly Public Cover doesn't follow me on Facebook. I mean, it doesn't follow me on anything. And I don't know why she's not following me. And I think she probably didn't like my answer or whatever, but she, I don't know why she's not following me. So I don't know. I'm like, uh, you're a JH fan. I do JH content. I started JH Report. You were, you, were, used to, you were watching the show when I was on there. She follows everybody else in the GH universe. DJ Z Flores is in the house. Um, they don't, they don't, you know, oh, oh, side note. So DJ C Flores, are you doing your Friday and Sunday stuff back on IG? A lot of folks are doing their stuff back on IG again. I noticed their music stuff. Are you doing your music stuff on IG? Okay. Got that out. Um, so I don't know why she's not following me. So I don't know what, I don't know what to tell her. It's like, follow me. Then you'll know what's going on, but she's not following me. She's following Lucretia. She's following Frank. She's following. Maybe she don't like me. I don't give a fuck first of all anyway. But I'm just like, if you want to know what's going on, then follow me and you'll know what's going on. Frank even said, go to James Lott Jr. So, I mean, I don't, you know, I can't help people. I can only do, I can only do so much. You can't lead a horse to water and make him drink. Or you can't lead a horse to water. You can't make him drink. That's what it is. Mixing my metaphors or getting them wrong. I'm like, just... I ain't got no time to try to, you know, whatever with you. So, good luck. So, you know, find us, don't find us, whatever, complain, whatever. But I'm telling people, you'll get a chance if you don't see it live. It will be on right afterwards. And you have, and you have a choice of audio if you want to listen to it. I know some folks like audio. They just want to put it on while they're doing laundry, whatever. There are some folks who don't like me, trust me. Not a lot. Kelly must have some issues. That's what's going on there. Clearly, she has some issues. So I don't. I don't even know. Don't even. Don't even. Don't even know. I don't. I. I can't figure out. I. I stopped trying to figure out people a long time ago. I just smile and move on. But there are a few folks who don't like me. I want their cup of tea. Not very many, but a few. And do I care? No. I don't care. You have a real right. You have a right not to like me. I had somebody write a, a review once on JH Report that said that I was a good producer and that I was good with stuff. And um, they totally just like said, we don't like you as a host. I'm like, oh, well, thank you. They said I should leave the show, just produce it. I was like, uh, okay. So you have been consumed with personal matters, which said, oh, congratulations on the property. I'm sorry it took 85 days. That's a long time. But congratulations on the property. Um, is it for a place for you to live, or is it a place for you to do business, or are you going to do something with it? So I want to say congratulations, homeowner, but is it a home? Is it something? I mean, is it for you? I don't know what's going on. That's a long time. That's what you told me. You're like, you shouldn't be on the show, James. You should just be, you should just be um, the, 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 the uh, producer, and that's it. I was like, uh, I'm not leaving. Okay, I did leave later. <laughs> but I'm not leaving. I'm I'm not leaving. Everybody's texting me when I'm trying to do my show. So, yeah. It's just like... Too much. Well, but it happens sometimes. Am I everybody's cup of tea? I'm sure I'm not. My style isn't... Some people don't like my style. Yeah, Mr. Bro. Okay. You go on, DJ C. Flores. Mm hmm. He's rich, bitch. That's right. He's like, this is my second property, bitches, that I own. 
Mm-hmm. You work it out. You work that out. That's right. Real estate, that's where it's at, kids. I own properties. I own several properties. That's what real estate, you know, that's that's uh, it's, that's where it's at, kids. I'm holding on to my homes. I love being down here in Ingle, Ingle Hood. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, some folks, you know, me, my co-host and I got along great, of course. But, I mean, just I just some people just, they don't, they didn't like my style. They don't like my voice or whatever. I don't, shit, I don't know. I don't know. I, again, I, I, didn't, I didn't waste time on them. Oh, I'm not going nowhere, so sorry if you don't like me being on the show. He's too loud. He laughed too much. And it's a goddamn after show, bitches. We're not talking about surgery and fucking, you know, metaphysics. This is, we're talking about people fucking sleeping together and cheating on each other. Like, hello. We're here to have a good time. And that was after Buzz's mission. Their mission was... It's supposed to sound like friends coming together and watching a show. Ta-da! Law of us are friends, and we came together to talk about a show. That's how it goes. That's what it goes. Like, exactly, the hell with them, of course. I don't, I don't give a fuck. You know, I don't care. I got thick skin, so I don't give a fuck. But it's just interesting that people say something like that. It's like, oh, you shouldn't be on the show. Well, I'm going to be on the show. All right. But that did leave eventually. <laughs> but that's another story. Some people, are, some people just say stuff because they can. There's that, there's that also. Right. I know. They just, they just, you know, they don't. And some people don't like having people. Misery loves company. And there are folks who feel miserable and they want to bring everybody else down. They can't see people. You notice know people out there who don't have people that are happy. People are happy to get upset. And it's because they're not happy. So fuck them. I don't care. I'm like, I don't care. You don't like me? Kiss my grits. I don't, I'm like, I don't, you, have, you have a right not to like me. That's fine. I don't care. Don't like me. Shit. You know, it's like the world's going to keep going round. Round and round and round and round, whether you like me or not. I mean, it really is. The world just keeps going, folks. No matter what you're going through, it keeps going. The world don't wait for you. It don't stop for you. It don't do nothing. It just, it, just, it just keeps on moving. Either you get on the train or get off. Get back on the train or stay off. That's how it is. Well, really, it really, it really is. It's a doggy dog world, and I'm wearing a milk bone. That's an old uh, joke from Dot Rodney Dangerfield. I know I'm aging myself. It's a really, it's doggy dog. It's a doggy dog world. I mean, I'm wearing milk bone underwear. That's what it's, that was his uh, tagline. The world stops for you, Tony. So I'll stop. You drive me crazy. I just can't sleep. I'm so excited. <laughs> or is it stop in the name of love before you break my heart? Think it all over. Think it all over. Or is it stop me? Uh oh, uh, uh, stop me. I mean, if you think you have heard this one before, if nothing's changed, I still love you. Yeah, I still love you. I can't think of more stop song. Oh, the most important stop song. Stop right now. Thank you very much. I need somebody with a human touch. I almost forgot the most, almost the most famous stop song. Of course, hello. The Spice Girls. I almost forgot. Can never forget my Spice Girls, kids. I need some. Uh, oh, oh, I thought I just heard something. I'm like, oh my god, I've been caught in my house. I don't know what I was gonna sing. When you're feeling sad and alone, we will take you where I gotta go. Smiling, dancing, everything is free. All you need is my facility. Oh, the, oh, you're doing. Oh, you're doing. Stop. Cause I'm late and listen, and I'm going back for addition. Doon 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 
See, everybody's talking about stop songs. I can't think of any more stop songs. That's about, that's about it. I forgot about that one, but I can't think of any other stop songs. That's what they say. I think that's it. So you think, anyway, and as you guys all start Googling stop songs, you're like, and DJ Floor, DJ Steve's like, let me think of some other stop songs. I can't think of any more stop songs. That's about it. Yeah, I, can't, I really can't think of any more. I'm trying to think of some more, and I really can't think of any more, but those are the ones that come to mind. I hate the Biggie, Supremes. Spice Girls, The Smiths. I mean, there's all some nice stops. And some good stops. Um, but yeah, I love the Spice Girls, of course. Mel C has a new album coming out, speaking of Spice Girls. Solo album. He's going to eat. Nighty night. Nighty night, bitches. He's going to eat. He's going to eat his pizza. Eat that pizza, bitch. Eat it. Eat it. That's right. Eat it. Yeah, so I had a long day. I had a really productive day. It was a long. Saw my mom. She's doing okay. Um, ran some errands. Did that. I have um, a little friend who turned fourteen today, and so I got to send her package. I went and got some. I went and got some boxes from UPS USPS. And so I got to box up, box up her packages and send it out to her. Uh, so I'm very excited. Um, and, yeah, I guess that, that was it. I was yeah, with my sister a little bit today. I had I had a glass of wine earlier, but now, now it's kind of went away. I'm, like, sober now. That was earlier. I had wine with um, some orange juice in it. Almost like a mimosa, a wine mimosa. It was good. Yeah, she goes, she goes to the doctor on Tuesday, the 11th. So we'll find out more what the next steps are. I'm just, I'm just hoping that I just hope the next steps are anything drastic. That's the only thing we're hoping for. And we're hoping they got everything. That's what it is, too. You know, so. But I, won't, I probably won't see her tomorrow. I might see her tomorrow now. I'm getting the, I'm getting the COVID test at 10. My report's between 10 and 10.30. So we'll see after that. I mean, my sister is going to take me to Dodger Stadium. I haven't been at Dodger Stadium in a long time. Eat some do- I don't like baseball because that just bores shit out of me. But I would go for the Dodger Dogs. They were so good. Oh, my God. I know they're made with probably pig toenails and shit or whatever they're made out of, but they're so good. Oh, my goodness. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure they're made out of some, like, the leftovers of cows or whatever. I don't know. But... I mean, I'll eat them anyway. It's been years. Been years. And my TV is on on mute right now, and they're showing some case where somebody killed somebody. I'm like, I don't even watch those kind of things. I was watching Days and Bald. I haven't watched GH yet. I finished listening to Forever in a Day. Listen to that. That was a lot. I can't do all these shows every week. I, I'm, I'm realizing right now it's a little too much for me. So, um... They will be sporadic at this point. For our day, it's easy because there's two episodes. That's easier. Bold's kind of easy because it's their half hour. But the other ones, I can't do them every week. So, but we'll see. GH Report may continue under the form of GH Me Spotlight. Uh, I will be talking to them about that. Um, are you listening to for, for FAAD? And days, I was like, that's a sex scene, uh, Lindsay Godfrey and Paul Telfer. That was a sex scene. She had no bra on. I was like, you go, girl. She, had, she was almost showing breasts. I was like, go, girl. Mm-hmm. Showing breasts. All that just unside that skirt. Why well, I get you hurt? I, I at my humps. My hump, my hump, my humps. My lovely lady lumps. Check it out. But I was like, that was a sex scene. I was, I was like, we're, we're uh, practices and censors. I was just like, wow. I was like, okay. I was like, okay, they're showing, they're going, they're, they were getting a little kinky in there. When I saw that Lindsay had no shirt on, I was like, oh, okay, girl. Covering her, covering her breast assist with her hand. I was like, you go, bitch. That's right. Lindsay's my friend. I love Lindsay. I was like, you go, bitch. And Paul Telford working it out. He, he, he literally mounted her. I was like, okay. I was like, okay. Okay, she me mounted her from behind, and I was like, uh, "We don't see that on TV, not on daytime." I was like, "Go on days, 
getting a little uh, risque. I was like, okay, for a little afternoon delight. Afternoon delight. Uh, afternoon delight. Mm, that's love. They took love in the afternoon to another level. I was like, okay, folks. I, was, I wasn't ready for. I was not ready for all that. I was like, okay, kids. I'm like just trying to eat a piece of chicken and watch TV. And I was like, I don't know what's going on here. I don't, I don't know what's going on. My television set. I was like, Ooh, okay. I'm like, sure. Mm-hmm. So he did. We have some of the stars of FAAD on here right now. Um, episode two. Episode one was a rousing success. Episode two. Look at the numbers. It's starting to be another success. I have no. Um, I don't know the new head of NBC. I have no. No comment on him. I might still. I just don't. I don't I'm, nothing shady. Not shady. I have no comment. I don't really. Know, I don't know him. So I don't know what. I don't know what to think. I don't watch NBC except for Days of Our Lives. I mean, I don't really watch NBC for anything. Um. So I'm just like, long as you Days of Our Lives on TV, I'll be fine. But ABC is like announcing new shows coming out. And I'm like, oh, okay, NBC. And you got, then you got Tyra Banks, my girl Tyra, going to be the host of Dancing with the Stars. I'm like, how's that going to work? I did watch Big Brother at night, and that's working. With Julie Chen Moonves. You go, Julie Chen Moonves. That's right, bitch. She's like, mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, I'm going to take his name and stand by him and say it 20 times an episode. That's right, girl. Miss Moonves. Mm-hmm. Your yeah, husband's probably guilty, but that's not a story. But allegedly. Allegedly. FAAD was super good today. And on and on JLJ Media. Yes, JLJ Media. It's just running by leaps and bounds. I have more I have new shows premiering every week for the next month. It's crazy talk. Crazy talk. Yes, I saw Drew Barrymore has a new show up GH. I don't know what that's... I like Drew, but I don't know what that's all about. Like, okay. So we'll see. We'll see if it lasts or not. Yeah, Julie Chen, she did stand by her, man. She did. She was like, I'm taking his name. She lost her... She left her spot uh, as the lead moderator on the on the talk. She was like, I'm going to stand by my man. Mm-hmm, that's right, girl. I was like, wow. I know, more talk. I know, it's like, we need more talk shows. Kelly Clarkson's show's cute. I give her points for hers. But do we need any uh, anybody else talking? It's like, oh, my. I watch. I don't watch half that shit. I don't, I don't watch any of that stuff. So the next episode, episode three, there's a return of my narration. So... And then there's Candy Mac. As soon as, I, as soon as I said my narration, Candy Mac comes on. So I can't be shady about the show if she's on right now. I gotta be quiet. Shh. Otherwise, being shady about Julie Chen Moonves. Um, the Big Brother show. So remember, I used to do that show on After Buzz TV, and I used to actually, and actually, I used to write blog posts on it, my blog, and it got huge hits. Um. I would love to do the Big Brother show on JLJ Media. I just have too much going on. I can't do it. Just can't add it. Because that's a big commitment to, you know, I'm going to watch it. I can't. I just can't. I just, I just, I just no room for me to do it. But I'll be watching it. But I'll be watching it at my leisure. I'm not, you know, but it's just like, it's so much to watch. I love the show. I love doing the after show. I love it. It's a big audience. But I just, JLJ Media, I can't do it. My voice of James Lott Jr. replayed by James Lott Jr. Yes. And I want to thank everybody who's been, been very um, loving towards my voice. Thank you. I've gotten lots of compliments. Um, but I've done it for a living, so I know, how, I know how to do this. I've done it for a living. So I like my voice. I like it. So thank you, everybody, who's supported the voice. So you can understand when I had Bell's palsy, I couldn't really talk or anything. It made, it made me scared. I was like, uh, I make money with my voice and my mouth. That was a little scary for a while there. And my new song is out. My opinion is the only opinion. It's out. People are listening to it. It's out. It's soothing. I want all of you. 
to give me all your money. All your money. Did that work? My Venmo should be going off right now. My Venmo is James Dash Lot Dash Seven. Does that help? Does that help? Does that help? Um, yes, the girlfriend's after show. People tell me they like that I catch things because every episode I catch something in the background or I catch something that's odd. It's been so much fun watching the show and catching stuff. How they used to was and what they used to not do no more. There's okay, so for example, one of the early if you watch the girlfriends, the lot of times they're at Joan's house. There's a front door. They always come in and out of a door. There's an episode where Lynn walks off to the side, of the front door, and there's no one. And they, they've never done it again since. It's like, what's over there? Like they never, they like they they chose not to do it anymore. So really weird. There's an episode. It's it's a Halloween episode where they have on the on the the uh, mausoleums the names. One says Cheney Bush for Dick Cheney and Bush because they were president and vice president at the time of the show. So that was kind of interesting too. So I was like, there's little things I catch um, that I, that the fans are telling me they love that I catch them. So it's kind of a fun thing. So it's kind of fun watching it. Oh, I love Vincent Price on Thriller. I was trying to think, I was trying to think of the, uh, the, no evil, no mere mortal can resist the evil of the thriller. Ah, ha, ha. I can't wait to laugh. My laugh's different. I love Thriller. And Thriller, when it sounds like they're closing the door at the end, it's actually the needle coming up from the record. And that's how the record ends. I love that touch and detail. Love it. It sounds like it's closing the door, but it's actually the needle coming up from record player. Those of you who don't know what record players are, record players are uh, devices that play records. You know, vinyl. I thought it was so smart. Michael was Michael and Quincy Jones were so smart. Even though I think Off the Wall is a better album. I know it's controversial. I think it's a better album. But Thriller is good. They're all perfection. They're all, they're all... They're all they're all good albums. I know a lot of folks don't like Bad. I love Bad. I, I love that album actually. I I actually if I had to pick the three albums, it would be Off the Wall, Bad, then Thriller. That's just me. No, that's not a door closing. Um, Ren and Larkins. That's the needle coming up from the record. But it sounds like a door closing. Play it again next time. You'll totally you'll totally hear it. If you had a record player, you know, you know, sometimes, sometimes at the end of record players, the record, it goes to the middle and then it comes up. Some stop there and some automatically come up. And that's what it is. It's, it's the needle coming up from the record. And that's the last song on the album. So, come on, folks. Off the Wall was R&B and disco goodness. It was. It was R&B and disco goodness. And it's funny because the same year Prince put out Prince, which was R&B and disco goodness. He had Sexy Dancer. I want to be your lover. But ding, 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 ding. I mean, I love that album. So the debate with the ladies I spoke to was about girlfriends and living single. Some ladies think girlfriends is better than living single, and some say living single is better. Here's my definitive answer for that, folks. Well, either way, last song on side one. That's the whole point. It's the last song on the, on the goddamn vinyl. Okay. Living Single and Girlfriends are two very different shows. All right, told you I get it, um, uh, monogamy. I just said, I meant to say at the end of the record, meaning that side doesn't matter. It's the end of that record. Cheese and crackers. 45, 33 and a third, and 78. Those are the speeds of a record player. I got I got Brandon Larkin is trying to school me on something. I know the album. I just meant to say like it's the end of the that side of the record. This is my show, goddammit. 
Anyway, back to my other rant. Living single and girlfriends to me cannot be actually compared. Um, I should I should do a video on this actually. Living single is more like friends. I compare those two, and girlfriends is like Sex in the City. That's how I compare. That's those are my those are my direct comparisons. Living single is about friends together. Living single has more in common with like or maybe even Golden Girls, where there was like um, there was a mother daughter where, where they had two cousins, which were Khadija and Sinclair. Two of their friends, and then their friends that live upstairs. And then one was a boyfriend. Like, there was a whole, they were all kind of all, they were all friends. And so it was a different story. It wasn't just like, I mean, even though girlfriends had William, it wasn't the same. I don't think it was, I think, I think they're two different shows. And girlfriends really focused on the girls, and girlfriends really, like Sex in the City, and girlfriends really focused on mainly women's issues. Living single. Focused on the guys too, very um, a lot. Even though, yeah, instead, yeah, William got some storyline too, but it was still a relationship to the girls. They're more Sex in the City, I'm sorry, than they are at Living Single. I think it's too. I don't think I think just because there's four women on it, it's easy to come. It's to like to me. I I never got the whole Madonna, Lady Gaga thing. I never got that either. I always felt that Living Single matched the gold with the Golden Girls, Regine Bland. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of felt too. You know, and it's like, it's a living. Dee -dee 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 -dee. That show comes on after Will and Grace on one of my stations. Uh, Life is a rich Riviera. It, 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 it's not a charity ball. So I agree with Monogamy the web series. He can kiss my grits about Thriller, but this I agree with him on that one. I agree. I agree. That's that's what it was more like to me. I think people just because there's four black women on a show. It, it, to me, it's just like it just it's just it's too much. Just too they're they're different. They're different. I think they're different. But I would say Living Single, and even uh, Eric Alexander said Living Single was pre Friends. That's basically what it was. And that's and you go you match them up. That's what it was, because Chandler and Monica, I mean Chandler, Ross and Monica were brother and sister, had their friends, they lived in apartments. It wasn't the same thing. Hey J Lot, would you watch a reboot of Living Single? If it was good, yeah, I'd watch it. If it's bad, I won't watch it. Yeah, I'd watch it. The show was great. I love the show. I was a big fan of Living Single. So yeah, I'd watch it. Is that the one with Wendy? I can't think of her last name. What show are you talking about? I don't know what that, I don't know what show that is. What show are you talking about? Wendy and Lisa from Prince of Revolution? I'm just kidding. I don't know what they're talking about. Um, I watch a reboot. If, if it's good, I'd watch it. Some reboots were good and some aren't. I don't know, but they're different shows to me. It's a it's a living it's it's a living had um well the one of the seasons had uh Shirley Ralph, then it had Angelian on the next couple of seasons. It wasn't a good show. Yeah, she is. Uh well I always want to know why Kim feels not the series in the last season. Because she did better. Because Kim could do better. Remember Kim was a, became a director and stuff. He started directing a lot more at doing other stuff. But yeah, I think I thought, was, I thought, I thought even Wheel of Tifa was okay, actress. She was okay. They were all okay. Talking about Rock 2, which led to 227 and Amen. Um, Amen 227. Amen wasn't the greatest show. It was okay. 227. I like 227 a lot, of course. Those shows wouldn't wouldn't work today at all. They're they're dated. Dated. You can't reboot those. It'd be funny to see Regina King, but as 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 playing Brenda or whatever. But this is it, they're just too dated. Jack Hay just did a post the other day. She was like, "Uh, yeah, my show, the pilot was top five, and they still didn't renew it." I was like, "Ooh, I'm well, sorry, girl. They show didn't. She got her Emmy, so she's okay." 
It meant it was fine. I mean, I watched it. Sherman Hemsley and Anna Maria Horsford. I know Anna Maria Horsford. I like her a lot, so she's really great. But I'm like, I... So when she came on Bold and the Beautiful, I was so happy to see her working. Her and, and Oba Babatunde. They, then they did them wrong. Right, it's on NBC. Those days are over, bitches. They're over. It's all over, kids. They Those days are over. There ain't nothing on TV anymore that's, like, worth anything. All that good TV is dead. It's now all streaming and all this other stuff. It's just dead. Those nice Saturday nights should be good. See, I'm older than you guys, so my Saturday nights, I remember watching Laverne and Shirley and Jappy Days. I remember watching Mork and Mindy. Um, I remember watching, you know, even before that, watching um, uh, Mary Todd Moore Show and Bob Newhart Show and Rhoda and all those. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a little older than the rest of you guys. I remember all those things. Mm -hmm. Empty Nest. Empty Nest was horrible, but I did like it, too. I watched it. I wanted to get that Life Magazine 70s edition, but it was just too, too, too much money for me. I was like, am I buying it? But I did want it. Not to quit messing with it, I didn't watch that show. Even though I like Jane Seymour, but I didn't watch that show. And Joe Lando from One Life to Live. Uh, but I didn't watch that show. You know, I like, I mean, I, mean, I, I used to watch The Waltons and Little House on the Prairie. I do, I, I like that stories of that ilk. I didn't watch Our House with, uh, Marlena and the oatmeal guy who just passed away. I didn't watch that show. Like certain shows I didn't watch. I'm like well, Dr. Christmas, I didn't watch that one. I didn't watch Touched by an Angel, any of those kind of things. Valerie Harper was the bomb. She was the bomb. She didn't have that New York accent. I love it. I grew up I, mean, I grew up my mother's New York. I grew up that, that accent. I love it. So yes, Rhoda was the bomb. She was a window merchandiser, and I was one too at one point. So here comes 80-year-old Kenny Mack talking about Spencer for Hire and hotel and shit. It's funny. My sister Tanya, who's younger than me, was talking about um, Heart to Heart today. I go, are you 100 years old watching Heart to Heart? She's like, do you watch? I said, no, I watched those shows when they first came out. I don't watch them now. I watch current television. She really laugh about that. You know, Spencer Fryer. Next week, you're going to be talking about fucking uh, New York Undercover and shit. I'm like, head of class and all that shit. I don't want I mean, to watch that. I mean, that's all old shit at this point. I'm all um, Stephanie Powell. You're going to start talking about Remington Steel and shit. You're going to be like, you're going to be trying to pull, pull out Pierce Brosnan on me in a second. And I was like, mm-hmm, we ain't going that direction. Don't start. My, my, Friday, my Saturday nights were consisted of the Love Boat and Fan Fantasy Island in the summer. The Plane, The Plane. Mm-hmm. That was, that was the ones I was watching. My Friday nights were Dukes of Hazzard, Dallas, and Falcon Crest. That was Friday nights back in the day. Mm-hmm. Murder, She Wrote. I know. Oh, my God. She was such a busybody. I was like, they need to, they need to murder She Wrote. Yes. They got rid of it. Was, it was uh, uh, Valerie's family. Then they they made it into the Harpers later. Killed her off and added Sandy Duncan, fucking Peter Pan chick, and a Triscuits girl. Mm hmm. The love boat. Soon we'll be making another run. The love boat. Now we got Candace Mack giving us a fucking um, TV guide rundown of shows past of their nights. You go, girl. You do a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Next we'll be quoting TGI Friday shows. And fucking, what's the other one? Um, what was Thursday night? Oh, my God, I'm blanking on what Thursday night was. Thursday night was um, Must See Thursday. That's right, Must See Thursday. Yeah, Who's the Boss got greenlit. It sure, it sure did. But Judith Light didn't sign on. She's like, I'm bigger than fucking that show. There's a lot that I had to see it. Who's the Boss? With Danny Pintaro. Alyssa Milano. She sounds like a cookie. Um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like everything old is new again. I'm like, get some new ideas, people. Like, what the fuck? There's a lot of people with show ideas that could be really good. Let's try those out for a change. Not go back in time. I'm like, oh, I'm so over it. So over it. Old shows coming back. So there you go. She's all, She's already there. She goes. She's doing TGI Friday. Uh, somehow, you, you doing, are you doing that 
TGI Friday. You're not even entering Boy Meets World or um, or um, Full House. You, you did that. You did that TGI Friday. Okay. Hollywood has lost creativity. Let's go back to the tried and true. It's like, come on, people. Get a life. Get a goddamn life. Mm-hmm. I know. You got in all these shows. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Teen Spirit. It's all our light down. It's contagious. Here we are now. It's contagious. Acting stupid. Full House, Boy Meets World, Teen Spirits. I didn't watch Dinosaurs. Next, we're bringing up Alf. You know, I'm like, you know, his motherfucking ass. Alf. Let's leave, let's, leave, let's leave Alf in the 80s. I didn't care for him then. I don't care for him now. Step by step. Uh, 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 bit by bit. My group of Trick and Darbell. My, my boy, um, what's his name? Patrick Duffy. Suzanne Summers. Y'all, Thea. She's like, she's like pulling out some. She's pulling out all kind of shit out. Shows I didn't watch. Thea or Clue, I didn't watch any of those. So you be talking about what's happening with uh, Rerun and, and Dwayne. Hey, hey, hey. Not what's, ha- what's happening and what's happening now. I, watched, I, I, I did watch both of those. I can't believe I am friends with someone who danced with Rerun. Mr. Shabadoo Quinones, my buddy. So funny. Night Raider. Okay, Night Rider. I need to let that go too. But it did we make you know, Magnum PI, Hawaii 5 0, um, MacGyver, and they're all hits? I haven't watched a single one of any of those shows, but apparently people love that shit. I always say certain shows like that, especially on CBS, the Tiffany Network, those are all old folks. Old folks will watch anything. You just put it on, it's for it's background noise. They watch it kind of, they're easy to watch. It's like, it's like, Junk food. It's just easy. It's all. It's all easy. So I'm just like. It's. It's all just like. I don't watch any of those shows. I, you couldn't even pay me to watch any of those shows. But I know a lot of folks who watch them. I've never seen an episode of, of NCIS Los Angeles. It's been on like 20 years. Go on, L Cool J. You work it out. I'm like. I. I just never. It's a huge hit. I've never watched an episode. I think Neil Long's on it now. Never watched it. But it's careers, there's careers being made. People people tune in for this shit. They do. They do. It's a very dancing movie. I barely liked the first one. I mean, it was okay. I remember how big, I remember how huge it was. I'm like, Patrick Swayze. I, only, I, only, I was only a Patrick Swayze fan in Ghost. That was a movie. And you just can't blur it out like that. I'll tell her in my own way. Molly, you're in danger, girl. That's my favorite part of the thing. Mm-hmm. Molly, you're in danger, girl. Very dancing movie. I'm like, sure. They did Footloose. It was a flop. So they, they haven't learned anything yet. They have not learned nothing yet. Dirty dancing. Dirty dancing. Mm-hmm. No. But you could draw about a line of fire. She was in that. Yes, she was not that. That's right. She wasn't that. She was in everything. I'm groping everywhere. She hates Molly Lansing. Um, and I'm friends with Patrika. That's the funny thing. I'm actually friends with her. It's, like, so weird to me. Exactly. That remake was horrible. It, it, was, it, it made no sense. It didn't do it. It was just not... It wasn't even needed. It was not needed at all. But my favorite song from Footloose is Almost Paradise Looking on Heaven's Door Almost Paradise How could we ask for more? I get my voice is, I, my voice is not lubricated. I swear that I could see forever in your eyes Paradise. Or um, 
What's the other song that I loved on that from that movie? Um Okay, I shouldn't like somebody's eyes is watching. Somebody's eyes is waiting you doing something. Somebody's waiting to take you back again. Love is no surprise with somebody's eyes. Uh, of course, let's hear it for the boy. That song, of course, was played everywhere. And um Oh, uh, what is it? Uh, what's the other song? Oh, my God. Um, the What's your name song? Holding out for a hero in the end of the night. He's got to be strong and he's got to be fast and he's got to be fresh from the fight. Um, so my brother tonight was just telling me how much he loved Grease 2 and how hot Michelle Pfeiffer was, which I agree she was. I hate Grease 2. I'm a huge Grease fan. You play that milkshake song, I will punch you in the face. But I do like regular Grease. Because Grease is the word, it's the word, it's the word, it's the word. I know Denise Williams, Niecy, heard her beautiful voice. Where is Denise Williams? Where is he? Too much, too little, too late to give and try again. Too much, too little, too late. Like, what happened to her? Black Butterfly. She had a bunch of songs. Like, what happened to her? She was so good. And she just that, was just, that was it, I guess. She had a few hits and that was it. She had a beautiful voice. That was a number one hit. Tell me about it, stud. I got chills, they're multiplying. Mm hmm. Suddenly, the wheels are in motion. And I, oh, that's, I'm sorry, that's wrong, wrong movie. That is, um, that was, um, oh my God, that was Xanadu. Xanadu. See, now I'm getting my let me John stuff mixed up. Xanadu. Now we are here in Xanadu. She does have an unsung from like years ago. She does. Tell me more, tell me more. Does he like half a car? Uh uh, uh uh, uh uh, uh uh, uh uh. We had Denise Nisi. Aw. But where is she? That unsung was years ago. Somebody find Denise Williams and give her a call. Let her know I'm looking for her. I wouldn't mind interviewing her, actually. I wouldn't mind. I don't know. They all had his. Sean Moore had dancing in the sheets. Dancing in the sheets. That was a big hit too. And they wave goodbye. And then please don't say no. And dance in in the sheets. Dancing in the sheets. I'm actually writing a musical and I'm writing a one man show. So it's kind of funny you say that. It's the last minute and a half, kids. It's eleven o'clock. This was episode 90, and we didn't talk about food. We talked about musicals and TV shows from the 80s and 90s. Interesting. Thank you, everybody, so much for the last 90 episodes. Thank you so much. I can't believe it's been 90 episodes. That's crazy talk. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I get my COVID test tomorrow morning. Wish me luck. I'm pretty sure I'm negative. So I'm just going to think that. But I probably will film me putting the thing up my nose. So I'm fascinated by that. Uh, but everybody have a good evening, a good Saturday, and we'll talk to you later.